Well, I guess this counts as uh, an another edition of Coming Attractions, which was a segment I intended to do regularly and then promptly forgot all about it. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. But anyway, it fits in this case because I'm just going to talk about a bunch of stuff instead of one in particular. We've had two trailers, uh, the Ahsoka trailer from, this, from Star Wars and uh, another Blue Beetle trailer. Then the news about Hugh Jackman and Deadpool. And uh, finally, uh, some uh, new uh, casting for the DCU and Superman Legacy. So, first of all, uh, Ahsoka. Um, it seems to be more of the same of the other trailer. Um, got a fairly good look at Thrawn in there, and it looks pretty good. A lot of the production value looks good. Uh, certainly better than what we got out of uh, Obi-Wan. But it's still, you know, the Force is female, at least on appearance. <laughs> and it maybe not. Maybe not. This has happened before where uh, the appearances of the marketing uh, seems to indicate that that's primarily what they're doing. And it's one woke message of, uh, of some form or fashion. And then it turns out very little, if any. Uh, a lot of times it just ended up being kind of stupid, which is to be expected these days, uh, which is really bad anyway. But still, uh, you get a whiff of that, and I, I just think this marketing is pretty bad in that case. Because it's, you know, it's like, yeah, girls kick ass. Now there's the female villain, and then there's the, the other. Uh, seemingly they're Sith, but apparently not, that sort of thing. My guess is, is this is their version of the Dark Jedis, which... Look, look, you're still a Sith. <laughs> you might as well be. I mean, I, you're just splitting hairs at that point. But an idea that it's it's this guy and this girl, uh, I'm wondering if that's taking from some of the templates that uh, Lucas had suggested in his treatments and that he wanted Darth Maul to return to be the big bad and uh, Talon, Darth Talon, would be his apprentice. So uh, maybe that, maybe they're borrowing some of that trying to squeeze it in here and there. I I, I don't know. Uh, heir to the Empire is mentioned, of course, which Thrawn was the ultimate villain uh, of that story. Um, how will they get there? And will they get there well? Well, uh, based on recent attempts uh, for the D-plus shows, I'm not optimistic. I hope I'm completely wrong. Uh, Ahsoka was a show that I thought was very significant as far as any as, uh, real change for the direction of Star Wars uh, for it to be saved or, well, resurrected, I guess. <laughs> it's been dead a while now, really. Uh, the one shining moment from The Mandalorian and then that was completely sabotaged and destroyed, you know, the story. And uh, since then, some really bad, lackluster shows. And uh, surprisingly so. Beyond just any kind of nods to wokeism. Just just badly done. I mean, there was Andor, but nobody watched it. And it's too far afield from the trappings of Star Wars. Even though, yeah, I did enjoy it. I thought it was a good show. I just don't think there's any appetite for that different of a take on Star Wars. In light of how much damage has been done to your your main Star Wars Uh narratives so i don't know uh production quality looked good I, I don't know what to make of this and so very cautious and extremely dubious hopefully turns out to be pretty good now the the, the position all these star wars shows are in is that you can't just be good you got to be great and you can talk about how unfair that is but that's where they put themselves and so that's just too bad I'm dubious that it can achieve that. It might be sort of okay, but that won't be enough for the overall uh, necessity for Star Wars to return or resurrect, as it were. So, there you go. That's basically all I got for the Ahsoka trailer. So then next was the Blue Beetle. So um, this is, uh, I guess, the final trailer. I actually like the other one, the first one, better. Uh, uh not a fan of the music and everything, but, you know, I'm an old fart. But uh, you, you get to look 
uh, at the uh, the villain that actually fights with Blue Beetle in there. Some of the antics of what he goes through uh, in trying to figure this suit out and all that sort of thing. Um, no mention of Batman being a fascist. <laughs> Which, look, I know a lot of people got upset. And that's one of those telltale things. Probably, from the looks of it and the context of what it appears to be in the trailer, probably doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's just what that character thinks and that sort of thing. But man, you've got to be aware of the era you're in. And anybody gets a whiff of that woke crap, and especially the idiocy of the director involved. Now, if he just did a competent job skill-wise, fine. But, you know, <laughs> it's not going to win any popularity uh, contest uh, for his personality and all that. But uh, it, it could be an okay, fine film. But... It's got all this stuff against it. You, you didn't need any more. It's got the the realization that none of these DCEU films matter. Saying it's a DCU film just means they probably cut out whatever stuff that linked it to The Flash or something like that. And uh, the, I think they did say they will mention other superheroes. And maybe they've shot some scenes now that they've got Superman cast. Who knows? Maybe he would show up in a post credit scene or something. Maybe so. Maybe that would be the deal. And then it really would be a DCU film. But I think for the most part, it's just a Blue Beetle film. And if with certain cuts here and there, it's just sort of this standalone thing. Even though, yeah, it was meant to be a part of the DCEU going forward. It, you know, well, things changed, you know. <laughs> Still, the coolest part is seeing Ted Kord's uh, bug flying around. And that's interesting. And that's the, the previous one, you could see the costumes of Dan Garrett and Ted Kord in there. And I wonder if they they tell that story, that there's this history and stuff. And more and more, uh, when they get to the DCU, it appears that that's very much uh, a, a long, well-established universe. And much to my chagrin, it appears Superman will not be the first superhero of that universe. Uh, they've done that in DC after the crisis and what it did, but I've never really liked it. I always thought Superman should be uh, the first superhero. You could have... Magical and superpowered beings been on the world forever, but the idea of the superhero era uh, should always begin uh, with him. So anyway, doesn't look like that's what they're going to do. So uh, yeah, I I like the first trailer better. Um, th this one is it's okay, but it's just a hodgepodge of stuff again, more of the same and, and whatnot. You see a little more of Susan Sarandon in there that she's like the ultimate villain in this uh, film. So. Uh, there you go for the Blue Beetle. So then we had some uh, news, and uh, one of the major ones is just an image, really, of Hugh Jackman in the Wolverine outfit. Um, and there's been quite a few Wolverine outfits, but this one is the closest one they've gotten, except for that brief scene that was deleted from uh, his, uh, what, uh, what was the second Wolverine movie? Yeah. And uh, showed the mask and everything. And it's like, oh, man. And then they never used it. <laughs> they had him in kind of a suit and uh, X-Men, uh, Days of Future Past and all that. Uh, but, you know, they never really got there. Uh, this one's much closer to the classic uh, blue and yellow one. I always liked the brown one that he had in the comics and stuff. But, uh, but that was his uh, first one. It's changed here and there over time. Uh, but this one, I guess it's trying to mimic uh, Deadpool's outfit. <laughs> Just yellow and blue. And uh, looks like, I mean, it's Deadpool, so this will be more of a comedy, uh, you know, comedic elements and whatnot. Uh, and probably a universe changing thing. So does he end up in Logan after this? Or what send off do they give him uh, going into the MCU? Uh, well, that's the mystery in it. And that's why Deadpool still stands to be a very successful film. I think it will make bucket loads of money. Um, but boy, it's a long time if you, uh, in between there <laughs> for Disney and Marvel after just destroying themselves. So they had the last great film they had was Spider-Man. Um, and then it just had diminishing returns after that. Doctor Strange, I think, be benefited heavily from being the follow-up to Spider-Man, but then everyone saw it. <laughs> and that was the reshot version because the original was so bad. And then you just saw this crap, you know, after that. And then Guardians comes in, and that was their 
little boost. It didn't quite do as well uh, in light of the times and what they've done to their brand since. And then, of course, people were disturbed by the animal cruelty in it and all that sort of thing. So, But uh, that's been the only other profitable film they've had for, for Marvel. Uh, Secret Invasion is just nobody's watching it. And then you got Marvels. That's not going to give them much of a but They might lose money on that. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, but so you got to wait all the way to Deadpool. <laughs> and then you go right back to nothing again, you know. Um, and then Jay, I can't wait for another Spider-Man movie. And that's going to be a while. So that's yeah, a bit of a mess. But anyway, it's cool that they got Hugh Jackman in the suit. Uh, that alone uh, increases interest in it, I'm sure. <laughs> Certainly his return and everything and teaming him up with Ryan Reynolds and all that, you know, that it should be a fun movie. Um, and hopefully uh, he does wear the mask, you know, to complete the whole thing. But of course, I'm sure he, like all the superhero movies, the star wants his face seen. So he's going to take it off all the time, you know. <laughs> it's like, why do you even wear it? <laughs> but anyway, um, so it, it looks cool and it's fine. So there you go for that. Now, finally, DCU. Uh, announcements. There's been uh, three cast members announced, and surprisingly, uh, I guess, I mean, I hadn't heard his name in contention on, on this, uh, but for Nathan uh, Fillion uh, being um, cast as the Green Lantern. No, not Hal Jordan. He's going to play Guy Gardner. Um, and uh, it should be a fun role for him. Uh because Guy Gardner uh, is one of these a-hole heroes. <laughs> but makes him funny. <laughs> of the main three, which was Hal Jordan and John Stewart. Much later on, you had, of course, Kyle Rayner. And now there's just, I don't know, just about everybody's a Green Lantern. <laughs> uh, but they're starting off with Guy Gardner. And, of course, he will be in Superman Legacy. So this establishes... That the DC universe is uh, well underway and there's superheroes all over the place. Uh, for whatever this story is, there will be a run-in with Guy Gardner's Green Lantern. And with Nathan's age, I don't know if they're uh, saying that he came to it late or he's been Green Lantern for quite a while. Which might also mean there's possibility that, that they're returning to the idea, just maybe of uh, Tom Cruise being Hal Jordan in that story they kept talking about or rumored about, you know, about the buddy cop story between Hal Jordan and uh, John Stewart. And, but it would be this series, you know, that's supposed to be true detective for Green Lantern. <laughs> and, uh, and what, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And I mean, would Tom Cruise be uh, up for that? You know, he's writing a superstar high on his movies being the only thing keeping Hollywood afloat <laughs> at the moment. Uh, but uh, a big budget, provided they've got the money, uh, a series, especially with that. You see, I thought it, it would not be such a big budget that it was, it's going to be terrestrial based. So they're not going into outer space, except maybe a few scenes here and there. But for the most part, the story is going to be on earth. Um, so, I don't know. But could they get Tom Cruise for that? Because Tom Cruise's name keeps getting bandied about for him to come out and praise the Flash. And now the Blue Beetle, he's apparently praised. Uh, you know, what's the deal? Are they really talking to him about this? So, I don't know. Maybe that'll happen. So, along with Nathan playing Guy Gardner, uh, will, uh, let's see, I'm not, not familiar with these actors but Isabella Merced uh, she's gonna play uh, Hawk Girl uh, and uh, Eddie Gathig I think uh, I don't know but anyway he's gonna be Mr. Terrific um, so I okay it seems fine enough uh, to me uh, I just I don't know anything about these other two actors not too familiar with them um uh, of course, Mr. Terrific, yes, there was a white Golden Age character <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, but the current Mr. Terrific uh, has been established for quite a while in DC Comics. 
And so I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and then they will apparently show up in uh, Superman Legacy. I don't know if it'll be brief cameos or if they'll be integral to whatever plot happens there. But it's part of that deal that, uh, you know, it's not going to be an origin story and all that sort of stuff. Although he's going to be questioning his legacy, his heritage and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the DC universe of superheroes will have already been well established in the timeline. So, uh, if Blue Beetle is a part of the DCU, he may be the only origin story you get <laughs> for a lot of this stuff. So, but you know, it, it, if there's a, a good, a fun, uh, uh, take and adventure on this, uh, hopefully it'll work. But again, they're in the, another bad position similar to what Disney is in, uh, in that it can't just be good. It has to be great. And uh, that's a that's a tough Mount Everest-sized hill to climb. But anyway, um, Nathan Fillion, he's played comical characters and whatnot. That, so um, he'll probably do all right. I doubt if that was he would. No, they'd already cast Guy Gardner for the TV series that got canceled. So... Um, I don't know, but anyway, we'll see where that goes. But uh, Guy Gardner can be a fun character, and maybe they'll do more with him, and maybe he'll uh, appear in the uh, the TV series as well, just sort of a, a background character, uh, when the main focus will be on Hal Jordan and John Stewart. But, so uh, there you go, with all of that to look forward to. Um, yeah, some hopeful signs, I suppose. Uh, I remain pretty dubious and uh, pessimistic on a lot of this uh, but maybe it'll turn out uh, for the better uh, highly dubious on Star Wars for the most part DC still has a chance but man man is it beating itself up a uh, big time especially this year so you know it's gonna be a again Mount Everest hill to climb <laughs> 